If you'll turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 1, Matthew chapter 1, just want to share a few thoughts as we come into our uh, Christmas season and prepare for our day tomorrow at celebrating the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. In Matthew chapter 1 and verse number 18 is the verse we're going to look at, Matthew chapter 1 and verse number 18, the Bible says, now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. Now I want to just stop there. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. The Christmas story is one that just about everybody's familiar with, even if you don't go to church. And if you grew up in church and grew up in a Christian home, you've probably heard the story over and over and over again. In fact, you probably think, I, I know everything about the story. And one of the challenges, I think, at the Christmas season is to read these stories again and try to see something fresh and something new. And that's why God says, now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise because we would be wise to pay attention to the details of the story and learn something new every year. So let's bow for prayer, and then we'll take a look at that story. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be here on Christmas Eve as we prepare to celebrate the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we pray in all the hustle and the bustle and all the activity and even the familiarity of the story that we would not lose sight of what this is truly about. It's about a celebration of your love for us and about your son, Jesus Christ. And we pray that you would help us to see that once again as we open up your word and you open up to our hearts. For it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. As we look at this story of Jesus Christ and uh, the different people that we know are involved, Mary and Joseph, the wise men, the shepherds, uh, there's a couple things that uh, strike me as I look at this story. And one is, uh, I want you to think about the price that it costs each of them to be a part of the Christmas story. We think, oh, wouldn't it have been great to have been there at the birth of Jesus? Wouldn't it be great to be those wise men, to present the gifts, to be Mary and Joseph, the mother uh, of Jesus and the stepfather of Jesus, to be the shepherds and to see the angels? But yet there was a price to pay. In 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 12, the Bible says, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And when you want to be used of the Lord and when you want to live for the Lord, it's a great blessing. But sometimes we have to pay a price for that blessing as well. For example, Mary. Now the name Mary means bitterness. In Luke chapter 1, if you want to turn over there, Luke chapter 1, we're going to flip back and forth between Matthew and Luke here. Uh, but Luke chapter 1 and verses 26 through 36 we know the story of how the angel Gabriel came and, and uh, verse number 27, to a virgin a spouse to, to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled as saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great. He shall be called the son of the highest and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there shall be no end. And we, we, we know this part of the story. And, and of course, he said there to Mary that you are blessed among all women. Uh, but yet this blessing came with a price. Uh, you also know that just before Mary found out she was pregnant, also Elizabeth, who was her aunt, uh, found out that she was pregnant with John the Baptist. And, uh, and, and you know, for Elizabeth, it, it was uh, a little easier because she was married. Uh, in fact, uh, she was not only married, but she'd been married for many, many years. In fact, she was beyond the childbearing years, and they'd never had children, and God allowed them to have children. And, and uh, so at least she was, uh, it was a little easier for her because she was married, but yet at the same time, I think it was also a little hard for her too because uh, she was at the grandparent age, and I am a grandparent, and I babysit my grandsons, and I'm so glad I can give them back to their parents at the end of the day. Uh, I can only handle about one... Uh, uh, one or two 24-hour periods before I'm done at this age. And, and yet Elizabeth had a baby there at, at her uh, grandparents' age, but more solely is Mary. Mary paid a heavy price to be used of God. In 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 13, it says, But rejoice inasmuch as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. You see, Mary paid the price of being a mother with a child out of wedlock, to be pregnant out of wedlock. 
In, in John chapter 8 and, and verse number 41, the, the Bible tells us, you do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, we be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. And so here was Mary, uh, uh, probably just a teenage girl at that time. In those days, that's about the age they would get married. And, and she was engaged. And then she finds out she's pregnant. And this, uh, an angel tells her, you can imagine how many people believe that story. And, and here she is pregnant in a society that looked down upon that. You know, today it's no big deal to be pregnant out of wedlock in today's world. But uh, back then it was a big deal. And, and it cost Mary a, a lot in order to be the mother of the Christ child. See, not, not only that, I believe that Mary understood through the message of the angel that not only should, would she give birth to the Christ child, but I believe as you read through the stories of the gospel that she also understood that one day he was going to die a very violent death. Can you imagine the day your child is born to know how he's going to die? And, and, and she paid a, a, a very big price. But even in that price of being used by God, she had the joy of her salvation. Back in Luke chapter 1 and verse number 45, Mary has just found out and been, just been told about having the Christ child. And it says in verse 45, and, and she begins to pray, and blessed is she that believed, for there, for, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. And Mary said, my soul did magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. Here she is. She finds out she's pregnant out of wedlock. And yet she has the joy of the Lord. And the first thing she has is the joy of her salvation. You see, she talks about the Lord my Savior in verse 47. And my spirit had rejoiced in God my Savior. There are those that say that Mary did not need a savior, but she was just like you and I. The Bible says in Romans 3, 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And, and that, included, that includes you, that includes me, and that included Mary as well. She knew that she was a sinner. And even though she was the mother of the Christ child, the earthly mother of the Christ child, she still needed him as her savior as well. And you and I also need him as our savior. If you want the joy of Christmas, then you have the joy of your Savior, Jesus Christ. You see, it's not just about a baby being born in a manger, but it's also about a Savior dying upon the cross to save us from our sins. You see, Mary was a, a, a good woman. Uh, she had to be, to be chosen by the Lord, to be the mother of the Christ child. And yet, as good as she was, even good enough to give birth to Jesus, she was not good enough to get to heaven on her own. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, For by grace are you saved, through faith, then not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Tomorrow, uh, many of us, maybe some tonight, uh, I have some good friends that uh, they open their presents up at 12.01, right after midnight. Whenever it is you open your presents, you're going to be handed a gift from someone. On that gift is going to be your name, and they're going to expect you to open that gift and receive it. And that's exactly what God expects from you and I. God has given us the gift of his son, Jesus Christ, not only to be born in the manger, but he gave him so that he could die upon the cross. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And God expects you and I to receive that gift and to open our heart and accept him as our savior into our heart and our life. In Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God is raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. In Romans 3, 23, it's, uh, Romans 10, 13, it says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And just as you receive a gift from someone who loves you and you open that gift up and accept it, you also need to receive the gift from God who loves you and open up your heart and accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. And so I hope if you've never received the gift of Christ that you would do that today. But not only did she have the joy of her salvation, she also had the just joy of surrender. In Luke chapter 1 and verse number 38, and Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. She said, God, whatever you want to do in my life, I am ready for you to do that. And, and, and then we need to surrender ourselves for whatever God wants for us. 
Ezra said it this way in Ezra 7.10, for Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord and to do it and to teach in Israel statutes and judgments. And so we need to come this Christmas and say, Lord, I surrender all to you. Whatever you want to do in my life, you can do it. Whatever you would have me to do, I'm ready to do it for you. You see, in Luke chapter 1 and verse 47, it says, And my spirit had rejoiced in God my Savior. In Romans 15, 13, it says, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing, that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Not only did God give us the gift of salvation when we trust him as our Savior, but he also gave us the Holy Spirit. And we have the Holy Spirit to enjoy on a daily basis. You know, Christmas is a time that we come together as a family to enjoy our friends and our family. And sometimes we haven't seen them all year long. And maybe some of you have flown here to Hawaii to be with your family. Or maybe you have family that's flown over here to be with you. And, and maybe some of you aren't able to be with your family, but you wish you could be. Well, the Lord, we can be with him every day through the Spirit of God. We can have that sweet fellowship and the joy of the Lord through the Holy Spirit on a daily basis. But we can also find joy in our trials. In James chapter 1 and verse 2, it says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall in diverse temptations. The very blessings of God can also be some of the greatest challenges in our lives. The very blessing that Mary received in being the mother of the Christ child was also, I believe, one of the greatest challenges in her life that she had to face. And so when we give ourselves to the Lord, God calls us and he sometimes challenges us to do things that we are, are not ready for, but God will bring us through that as well. Now, the wise men in Matthew chapter two, you know the story, uh, they traveled a long distance. We believe probably about a two year journey in order to come and see the Christ child, uh, a long, hard journey. It's not like today getting on an airplane or getting in your car. Uh, this was by camel. This was by foot. Uh, this was a long, hard journey through deserts and mountains just so that they could find the, the Christ child. You know, some, and, and then when they get very close, when they're almost there, the star disappears. Uh, we don't know what happened. Maybe it was a cloudy day. Uh, maybe there was a storm. Uh, I don't know why uh, they lost sight of it, but the cloud disappears. You know, sometimes in our lives as Christians, we can lose sight of the Lord. And sometimes it seems like, well, where is God in this situation? But like the wise men, we just need to keep on going because God will reveal himself to us again. You see, you can also lose sight of your guiding principles. That star had guided them throughout the journey. And sometimes in life, we as Christians lose sight of the principles that have guided us through our life. And we need to stay faithful to those principles. But then there was also the shepherds back in Luke chapter 2, at verse number 8. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. In verse number 10, the angel said unto the fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Uh, I can't imagine what this was like for the shepherds. They were out there in the field just doing their business, doing their job, and all of a sudden, uh, this angel shows up <coughs> and just appears before them. And that must have been a very frightening ordeal. That must have been a very traumatic uh, ordeal in their lives. And sometimes we look at these shepherds and think, what a great thing to see an angel. But I, I, I kind of think if you were out in the middle of nowhere at night all by yourself and somebody's... <coughs> excuse me, somebody suddenly appeared, uh, you would be frightened. And, and these shepherds, though, uh, they, they stayed faithful to the Lord. And, and they kept following the Lord and going on. And, 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 and look at verse number, uh, look at <coughs> Luke chapter 2. And, and at verse number 10, it says again, that the angel said unto them, fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Caleb, can you bring me a glass of water, please? And um, then it goes on down there to verse number 15, and it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, <coughs> let's now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. See, these shepherds had to pay a price. They had to get over their fears. They had to get over their worries, and they had to go and, and, and see what this was all about. There's a price to pay. And as you look at the story of Christmas, you see that each of these characters paid a price. But the other thing that strikes me in the story as I've read it is how much scripture. Mary, back in Luke chapter 1, when she uh, said her prayer in verses 46 through 56, uh, in that prayer, she quoted scripture 15 times. 
I wonder, could you quote 15 Bible verses in your prayer? 15 times she quoted verses, in 10, ver- in 10 verses she quoted the Old Testament. Uh, this is back in the day when they didn't have their own Bible. This is back in the day when most people couldn't read. And, and the only thing way they could know the Word of God was to memorize the Word of God. And here was a young lady that knew her Bible and, and trusted in her Bible. In Psalms 119 verse 97 it says, Oh, how I love thy law. It is my meditation all the day. I hope that this Christmas you will take time to meditate upon God's word. I hope you will especially take time to read the Christmas story in Matthew and in, and in Luke and, and really to pay attention and, to, and not just to think, well, I already know that story, but really to, to, to listen to what the word of God says. The wise men, uh, I'm not sure exactly how they knew that, the, that Jesus was going to be born, how they knew to follow that star. I believe it was probably uh, through Daniel. Uh, the prophet had been there for years past, and maybe he had left some prophecies and, and taught people about it. But these wise men, uh, they, they knew what they were doing. They, they knew that they were seeking the Lord. In Jeremiah 29, 13, it says, And you shall seek me and find me when you shall search me with all your heart. I've got a little grandson who's going to be four years old in January, and, and boy, he's, uh, he's looking everywhere to check out if there's presents for him. Uh, he's been doing a lot of seeking throughout the house, trying to find presents all over the place that are for Joshua. And uh, you know what? Uh, you ought to seek the Lord during this Christmas time as well. You ought to take time to seek him and uh, spend time with him and uh, to celebrate the Lord Jesus Christ as well. Uh, they sought diligently. And, and we need to seek the Lord diligently. In Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 15, it says, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. In Hebrews eleven six, 6, it says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. The word diligently in Hebrews chapter 11, it means to crave, to demand. Uh, right now, uh, I think a lot of you are craving uh, sugar and sweets, right? Uh, everywhere you turn, there's cookies and there's chocolates and there's all kinds of good things. And, and, and you know, uh, we've got this craving. And, and, and I don't know about you, but about four or five days after Christmas, after most of them have been picked through, uh, I'm starting to go through boxes trying to find something that's going to still be good, you know? And, and we ought to crave the Lord Jesus Christ. We ought to desire him in this Christmas season as well. And then the shepherds in Luke chapter 2 and verse number 20, Luke chapter 2 and, and verse number 20, the, the Bible tells us the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they'd heard and seen and it was told unto them. You see, they, they had heard these things, but they didn't stop there. They went out and told everybody about what they'd heard and about what they'd seen. And I want to encourage you at this Christmas season, take time to tell the story of Jesus you know, the world's going to talk about Santa Claus and Rudolph and Frosty and, and all the other uh, Christmas uh, uh, people and all the other Christmas decorations and all the rest of it. But we need to talk about Jesus. And we just need to simply share what we've heard, what we've seen with others around us as well. In Philippians chapter 4 and verse 9, it says, Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. The last thing I see in the story that maybe is a little something you maybe missed in the past is this, uh, the blessing. Go look at Luke chapter 2 and verse number 19. It, it says, but Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. I talked about this in another message here recently. That, that word ponder, it means to combine, to put together. It, it's like when you buy a Christmas gift and on the front of the box for your kids there, it says some assembly required. Now, that's, uh, that's usually, there. these things are all made in China, and some assembly required in Chinese means you have to have a rocket science degree to put this together. Uh, it's not always easy, but you need to take time to figure out how to put this, whatever it is, together. And what God wants us to do this Christmas is to put together the Christmas story, to ponder it, to combine it, and, and really think about what it truly means. But not only did she ponder, but look at Luke chapter 2 and verse number 33. It says, And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. So we need to ponder and we need to marvel at the things of the Lord, to marvel at what God has done. This is the season where we celebrate God becoming a man. The Bible tells us that, that he 
was God himself in Philippians chapter 2. But he took upon the form of a servant, was made in the likeness of men. He came to be born, not as a full-grown man even, but as a baby. I don't know about you, but that just strikes me with awe and wonder. To think that, I don't say this sacrilegiously, but to think that God had to have his diaper changed. To think that God had to be picked up and carried around. To think that God had to be fed. Now, he never stopped being God. The entire time he was Jesus Christ, from the moment of conception to the moment he died, he was still God. And yet, he took upon that form of even a baby with one purpose in mind, so that he could save your soul. I don't know about you, but that makes me marvel. That makes me wonder. That just creates awe in my heart. And then Luke chapter 2, in verse number 19, it says that Mary kept all these things. And in verse number 51, it says, And he went down with them and came to Nazareth, was subject unto them, but his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. And again, I talked about this in a recent message. The word kept in verse number 19 means to keep it in memory, to keep it close, to not forget it. But the word in verse number 51, it means to keep carefully, to continually observe. Don't stop. You know, a lot of people only pay attention to Jesus at Christmas and Easter. And we ought to keep him in our heart every day. Every day we ought to celebrate the love of God. Every day we ought to celebrate our Savior. Every day we ought to keep it in our heart. The wise men, they came before Jesus and they bowed to worship him. The shepherds, They came and they praised and glorified God. And so I hope today, as you prepare for your Christmas celebrations, that you will take time to ponder these things. To take time to marvel at the story and the little details that are there. To take time to keep it in your heart and to worship him and to praise and to glorify his name.